guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to do something comfy and I'm super super happy because I'm literally always in comfortable clothes while working and while I'm at home and everything like that. So I thought what time is better for comfy clothes like sweats? then winter time or Christmas time. So I like to have my Christmas very comfortable. So I will be in sweats all the time. <laughs> and I thought maybe not only I want to do that, maybe also friends and family would like to do that and be comfortable during Christmas in their sweats. So if you're friends and family, I would like to ask you to just simply click off of this video because you're gonna get spoiled like a lot, like completely basically. And uh, yeah, since we're in Germany, I'm gonna say it in German as well. Leute, falls ihr zu Freunde und Familie gehört, macht das Video aus, weil sonst werdet ihr hart gespoilert. <laughs> okay, so now that that's out of the way, we're going to do sweatpants and a sweatshirt today. So we're gonna do a sweat suit. How do you say that in English? I'm not really sure. Also, I am recording with my new camera and it's super heavy um, to have it, you know, like, like this. So we're gonna do uh, a comfy look today, sweatpants and a sweatshirt. And I'm really excited to do this because I have never done it before and I don't know why because it's literally my everyday outfit. We're gonna take the pattern off of an already existing piece, like something like this that I'm wearing already. Not only do we have to um, take the pattern off of an already existing piece, we have to do women's wear, men's wear and I have to grade both because obviously people have different sizes. So. That's gonna be a lot of fun. My arm is killing me. There we go. That's gonna be a lot of fun. And we're gonna jump right in to taking the pattern off of my favorite sweatpants sweatshirt combo. I have to figure that one out. What's my favorite one? Anyways, let's go. I got three different types of fabric for the set. This right here is a 2x2 two two knit, which I'll be using for my cuffs, the hem and the neck finish. A knit like this is highly elastic, but goes back while never losing its shape, which is why it's the perfect finish for the neckline, for example. Mine is 100% cotton, which I really like, as it shrinks back to its original shape after a wash. I prepare all of my pattern pieces out of this fabric by just ironing them in half. The fabric I chose for my sweatshirts is this cotton and lyocell mix. Lyocell is also a cellulose fiber. The cellulose for lyocell stems from eucalyptus, which is then made into a rayon lyocell fiber and then woven into a lyocell fabric, basically. It's super soft and comfy and a bit on the heavier side, which was really the perfect choice for the look I was going for. To put the sweatshirt together, I first sew the sleeves onto my front piece. As I have raglan sleeves in this pattern, it's an easy, almost straight seam that I did with my overlock. I then iron the seam allowance towards the sleeve and top stitch it down. Then I do the same with the back piece, aligning the back raglang seam with my sleeves and sewing them together with my overlock. Then top stitching the seam allowance down facing towards the sleeves.
Once done with that, I turned the sweatshirt wrong sides out to sew the side seams together. I'm also only using my overlock for this, but I'm not top stitching this time. The seam allowance gets ironed towards the back piece. Since the knit pieces are already prepared and ironed, the shorter sides of the neck piece have to be sewn together. Just use a normal stitch and avoid overlocking for this as it's gonna make it pretty bulky. I realized that only later on, but I wanted to tell you nevertheless. Iron the seam allowance of that short side open and fold the neck piece back in half and iron it. Now you can align the notches of both the neck cutout and the knit and sew them together. Make sure to put the seam at the shoulder notch as that's usually the spot where it's sewn onto. You can also put it in the center back but I've rarely seen it there. I'm using my normal sewing machine to make sure it's securely in place. I also use my overlock for this but then top stitch the seam allowance down into the sweatshirt away from the knit. I repeat the same steps for the cuffs and for the hem as well. I struggled a bit with copying out the pattern of the sweatpants as the waistband was cinched in with an elastic, so it was more or less a guessing game on how wide the waistline to make. It ended up working out though and as I am really really happy with the result. The easiest way for me to trace out the waist was to measure the waist while pulling on it so that the elastic was fully stretched out to see how much fabric was getting cinched in basically. As I had the center front as a line which I was able to measure, I could then determine where to draw the curve for my waist. I started off with overlocking the edges of my pockets. And because I was working the whole day, somebody got a little bit jealous. <laughs> I'm joking, obviously she gets loads of pets all the time. She just really likes my felt, which I'm using to iron. She just really likes to lay on it and to stretch on it and stuff. So she jumps on it while I'm working. Next up is actually closing the center front and you can also go ahead and close the center back while you're at it. I am using my overlock to close the seam because then the seam stays stretchy but you can of course also sew along normally while pulling on it a bit so that you don't compromise the elasticity. I give it a good iron and just iron the seam allowance to either side, it doesn't really matter and then I can continue working on the waistband. and. I have a lot of things to say about the waistband. You're gonna see it in the video, but I was struggling super hard with the waistband for these pants. I had a lot of figuring out to do. So this is version one of my attempt on a waistband. It's after the pants that I was taking the pattern off of and they had the waistband attached to the pants themselves. So I thought, oh, okay, that's apparently how you do it. I'm gonna do it the same way. I'm gonna talk about uh, that a bit uh, further, 
uh, later on after my version one basically is through and I can <laughs> talk about how it went. But don't use this as your tutorial for the waistband. I'm gonna put that in the very end after I figured it out. But anyways, let's just ignore the waistband situation for now and continue with the pockets. You're gonna find some notches in your side seam in front and back pattern pieces and you're gonna want to align your pockets in between those notches and just sew them onto right sides together, both the front and the back pants. After you're done with that, you can completely overlock the side seams in both the front and the back pants. Then you want to put right sides together front onto back or the other way around so that all the pocket notches meet. You wanna pin those together very accurately because once these are pinned in place, you wanna pin around the pocket as well and just align all pattern pieces very nicely. You can actually close the side seams with the pockets in them basically in one go. So you wanna sew around the pocket itself and down the legs. Now the only thing that's missing is putting the inner leg seam together. You want to make sure that when you put center front and center back on top of each other that the seam allowances face the opposite ways so that your seams nest and this is gonna prevent any bulk and just overall makes the finish nicer. Then you just want to sew along that seam. I went to my overlock again and you're done with the basic pants. So guys, I finished my pants yesterday. And I have some things to say about them. So first of all, they fit good, they look good, everything's fine. But the one thing that I really struggled and that I did not like uh, sewing was the waistband. And I thought about this yesterday, basically before I went to sleep, what I could do to make things easier because I struggled a lot and I don't want you to struggle like that because it's also unnecessary as I figured out later. Um, so basically what I did, I had the waistband attached to the actual pant legs and um, that's just because the original one that I took the pattern from had that. So I was like, oh, okay, so that's apparently the way. Let's do this, do it the same way. I have not thought about that I don't have an elastic that is as thick as the, the waistband right here. Therefore, I had to kind of cheat a bit and use two smaller or thinner elastics that I put in the top and in the bottom. And then there in the middle is basically the tunnel for the strings that you can use to cinch in your waist as well. So I have the solution for you, which is basically another pattern piece. Um, for the waistband where you actually make tunnels. So let me explain why I struggled so much. Because I have basically three different tunnels that I couldn't put together, then put the pieces inside, so elastic and the strings. After the fact, I couldn't do that for whatever reason. I could have done that. I'm just thinking about this right now. I could have done it that way and it would have worked. Nevertheless, whatever, I, I didn't think about it. So apart from that, this is still harder. Um, this is still harder because of the curved waistband. So I'm gonna follow through with the separate pattern piece that I already made. I already printed it out. I'm gonna do for the next pair that I'm doing as I am doing this for literally 10 people. Um, I have a few, uh, <laughs> I have a few takes. So these will be mine because they're ugly and um, yeah, I will not, of course, uh, gift anything that I am not satisfied with to anyone else, <laughs> obviously. So I'm gonna do um, another attempt with a separate pattern piece. Um, prepare everything. Uh, you saw everything already, um, nothing has changed there. I am just redoing basically the waistband and I'm gonna show you the new final way of sewing the waistband on that I can also present to you and that you can follow through with. So let's do that. 
So as I mentioned before, I am now cutting out a separate waistband, which is probably the way I should have gone from the very beginning. I don't know why I was going with the already attached waistband and then on top of that making it curved. But anyways, <laughs> mistakes have been made and <laughs> I learned from them. I am preparing the waistband the same way that I was preparing the knit for my sweatshirt. So after ironing, just to keep it from curling at the edges, I am also ironing the piece in half before I am sewing the shorter edge of the waistband together to create a loop. I am also not overlocking that seam and ironing it open so that it's less bulky. And then I'm using my pattern as a template just for me to be able to draw on the stitching lines for the different tunnels and then of course also the placement of my eyelets. Measuring from the folded edge of my waistband, I am drawing a line at two centimeters and then another one at three centimeters. And then the last one, which would be the stitching line to attach the waistband onto my pants would be at five centimeters. I'm using my awl to just poke some holes into the points where my eyelets should be located. Then I can just push them through and fix them into place with my handy tool that I have right here. Just go ahead and do whatever your specific eyelets tell you to do because they are different from model to model. So in the center back, I was pointing like two fingers wide to not sew. That is because from there, you're gonna put your elastic into your waistband. And while I was working on that, it took me a long time, I did not realize my big mistake. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. <laughs> Good morning, it's Friday, and I am redoing the waistband for the third time now, because um, the first one was too difficult I managed to do it it looks ugly on my pants whatever I told you about that the second one I was like mm, I'm gonna redo it let's make a new pattern piece and so on turns out I did it wrong <laughs> and it's not long enough this is like I don't know what I was thinking but it's just the normal waist circumference which is obviously completely wrong as you would like to cinch it in a bit and have a, a, an elastic inside so I also tried different options and whatever. I finally came to the conclusion to use different eyelets so that I can, uh, of course, lengthen the piece. And I am using different eyelets now so that I can put a safety pin through and I can put the band normally and nicely through the whole piece without having too much struggle. And I am thinking about not putting an elastic in because I already destroyed so much because of my wrong pattern piece and the um, cord here will do it. But let's see how I feel about it as I have to mass produce. Um, I have to like do one, two, three, four, at least four pairs still, maybe five, I'm not sure if I'm counting right, but I have to do a lot. And I don't think that I have the time nor the will to go through that struggle that I had before with the elastic. And it totally works without the elastic if you just have the, the straps to, to tighten it. So I think I'm gonna do that. And then just, you know, do a normal waistband, put the bigger eyelets in. I didn't use the bigger eyelets, by the way, because I can't use my tool. I have to hammer those in and I hate that because of the noise, like my cat gets nuts, my neighbors hear it and so on. Like that's why I tend to use these ones. But I don't have another option now so I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the plan. Okay, let's go.
And then finally the waistband worked out the way I wanted it to and I was able to attach it to the waistline of my actual pants. That's just a matter of aligning all notches, sewing it together, overlocking it and then top stitching the seam allowance downwards away from the waistband. And then finally I was done. I just hemmed the pant legs, ironed two centimeters of the leg hem up and top stitched it at around two centimeters, 1.5 centimeters. If you have the patience and you want your design to look like that, you can also insert an elastic into your leg hems. I didn't do that because I was not having elastics that day. And honestly, I also like the look without the elastic. But of course you can do whatever you like and whatever you feel most comfortable in. And that's it already for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, then please go ahead and give this video a like and leave a comment down below with your thoughts on this combo and if you're gonna make yourself one as well. Of course, this pattern is on my Etsy shop already. You can go and check out the link in the description down below. That's the most direct way to support me and my small business. But if you don't want to or you don't have the means to, that's totally fine as well just liking this video and commenting on it is enough as well and would help me out tremendously. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring the bell down below so you'd get notified every time that I post. I post on Sundays so you can keep an eye out for that. So thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys!